those who refuse the gift of eternal life are condemned to wander in the darkness of eternal night. Coming this fall from SJS Direct. Recently, actor John Boyega slammed Disney for using his race to market the Star Wars sequel movies before sidelining him. Now, your John Boyega does have some merit to his claims because if we look back as far as 2014 at the initial Force Awakens teaser, your John Boyega's fin is featured prominently in that teaser in a scene holding a lightsaber. And it's from that scene that many people implied that John Boyega's Finn character was going to be a main character and the story was going to be revolving around him. And it was those teasers and trailer that set off a faction of Star Wars fandom and exposed the racism from a small faction of Star Wars fans. One fan allegedly committed suicide on hearing about John Boyega's Finn character possibly being a lead character, and that showed how this character of Finn was practically polarizing for a small faction of Star Wars fans as related to his race. Now, that's where your John Boyega has some merit to his claim, but when you take a further critical examination of John Boyega's claims about Disney using his race to market the Star Wars movies, they start to become disingenuous as you start to look at the larger picture of his participation in this trilogy. Now, I find it interesting that John Boyega is coming out here slamming Disney on now that the trilogy is completely over and now that it's wrapped up and in the can years later, and he complains about them using his race to market the movies, but where was John Boyega's concerns back when this film was in pre-production? That's the critical question I have to ask your John Boyega as related to his claims regarding race, because he claims that they used him to market the movies and sidelined him, but you would think that your John Boyega would have spoke up during the initial time of filming this movie because usually before a film is shot, most of the actors are given the script and usually once you're given the completed screenplay, you can review the entire story. That's something most filmmakers usually do even though they sometimes do revisions like pink pages and blue pages throughout production. Usually they have a completed screenplay and everybody has sat down and read that screenplay 5, 10, 15 times at table readings and other readings that they have done during casting. So your John Boyega would have known about how much of a prominent role his character had in the movies way back during the pre-production of this film. So he would have known that his character was a sideline character way before this film even started shooting. And that, as I believe, should have been the time for your John Boyega to speak up about this character being marginalized in this film and practically being made into a buck dancing slave. Unfortunately, your John Boyega is one of these foreign blacks from the UK, and because he's a foreign black from the UK, he doesn't really understand white supremacy and systemic racism the way an American black understands these concepts, because an American black man would understand on reading this script, he would say there's some racism going on here with this stormtrooper being on a janitorial detail, and he would have called that out to those screenwriters as soon as he read the script. Moreover, a black American would have also called out 
the whole concept of Poe Dameron giving him his name, basically making the Finn character into a slave because your Poe Dameron was just like a slave master. He was helping the rebellion, and this was Finn was like the slave who was helping him along, and he gives him his name the same way a slave master gave him a slave. And a black American would also be calling out the way your Finn was treated by Ray, because that's what a black American actor would have done on reading that script. They would have noticed all of the racism going on. Unfortunately, a UK black American didn't notice all of this racism. And that's where I, again, say that your John Boyega was disingenuous talking about Disney using his race to market the film and then sidelining him. No, the time for John Boyega to speak up was during the pre-production once he got that screenplay and read that screenplay. And if he was really serious, that's when he would have spoken out on this Star Wars movie and the role that was being presented of a black man in this film. That's when your black American actor would have called out the producers like Kathleen Kennedy and, and people like the directors of this film and said, look, the, the way you're presenting a black man in this film is extremely racist and you need to clean this up or I'm going to leave. But unfortunately, your John Boyega, being a foreign black, thought that he could create a covert contract with Disney to be able to use this film to springboard his career. So he remained silent about the way blacks were being presented in this film. So he had no problem with playing this buck dancing, step and fetch it minstrel on this film, on the Star Wars series, as long as he thought it could elevate his position. Now, what is also disingenuous is how your John Boyega goes on in this article with GQ magazine to talk about how Daisy Ridley and Adam Driver's characters got all of the story and all the nuance, and then starts talking about people of color like Kelly Marie Tran's Rose Tico character. That also shows me how disingenuous your John Boyega truly is, because whenever I hear the term people of color as related to a person talking about issues of race, I know that that guy really is full of it, because when we look at this whole Star Wars thing, again, yes, they did use him to market the film in the initial teasers and trailers, but again, the time for him to speak out wasn't at, at right now. The time to speak out was back then, and he had no problem with them having him play this chicken grease sweating janitor in, in, in those scenes in Jakku. He had no problem being the punching bag for Rose Tico in The Last Jedi, and he had no problem being old Uncle Remus in The Rise of Skywalker, but it's only when his career managed just not to go anywhere because the films got critically panned and roasted that your John Boyega now wants to speak out. And moreover, he's only really wanting to speak out because the Black Lives Matter movement is the, is the hot thing right now, and what he wants to do is capitalize on the popularity of Black Lives Matter and all of the wokeness going on in Hollywood. Now, if your Finn had been a prominent character and the Star Wars franchise had become popular, I doubt we would hear anything from your John Boyega as related to complaining about this film. He would probably be remaining silent and waiting for the next job had this film been a success. But with this film being a failure and him possibly being typecast as this clown character, we have your John Boyega looking to capitalize on all of what's going on 
with all the protests as related to George Floyd and Black Lives Matter by trying to put on a pro-black facade when in actuality he's all about advancing himself at everyone's expense. So when I look at your John Boyega and his claims, yes, on the surface they have merit, but the time to make those claims was during the pre-production. That's when I could say, oh, John Boyega is really serious about protecting the image of black people, preserving the image of black people, but for him to sit there, read this script, and then watch this, then participate with playing this role in this movie, and then after all of these films are made, then talking about how Disney used him to be marketed and then sidelined him, it seems like you were perfectly fine with being sidelined as long as you were able to advance at black people's expense. And it seems like when things didn't work out for your John Boyega, then he wants to come out here and then try to play this race game. And the time, again, to, to make your claims is when these racists are making this film and presenting a racist image of black men and making black men look like a joke. I mean, he had no problem with making black men look like a joke in all three of these movies, but now he has a problem because it's the end thing to do to go out here and make protests against these companies. That, again, shows me how dishonest your John Boyega is, how full of it your John Boyega is, and how we really cannot really go along with guys like this because guys like this will throw black people under the bus because they really aren't concerned with protecting the image of black people, preserving the image of black people. It's all about them moving ahead at our expense, and it's all about them trying to capitalize on, on black anger and all about trying to capitalize on black issues. And that's one of the things I have a problem with John Boyega because, again, he had no problem in 2015, but in 2020, he wants to sit there and have these sour grapes now that white supremacy has tossed him aside. Now that they have finished using him, they have a problem. But, he, but the whole thing is, you consented to white supremacy using you. You consented to Disney using you. And you had no problem with them using you. But now that you cannot get any more crumbs from the master's table, now you have a problem and now you want to speak out. I'm sorry, this type of disingenuous Negro is not somebody I can really take seriously, and he's not somebody anybody else should take seriously, because again, when the time to speak is when these types of producers and directors are working behind the scenes, the time to speak is when they're handing you this screenplay, and the time to speak is when, before, they shoot a single frame of this film and let them know that they're not going to be able to go out here and present this type of image to black people, that it only takes a couple of minutes for them to rewrite this script, and it takes a couple of minutes to treat black people with respect, or you can just walk away from this movie and keep your intangibles, like your dignity, your self-respect, and your self-worth. And that's far has far more value than all three of these craptacular movies that your John Boyega starred in and are now going to be known as some of the worst movies in cinematic history. If you'd like to try some of my positive African-American fantasy fiction, like the Isis series, the E-Steam series, the John Hayes series, and the Smisterella trilogy, you may do so by clicking the link to Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find them on Smashwords, the iBook Store, and Google Play. And if you want to help me make more videos and be able to stay um, on the internet, you can donate to my Patreon, my PayPal, or my Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available, paperback and e-readers, The Temptation of John Haynes. Given to temptation, pick up this action-packed African-American paranormal romance. Get The Temptation of John Haynes in paperback and e-readers today.